فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم نمبر 2 فمن اظلم من من افترى على الله كذبا who is worse a then the person who lies about Allah and says this is the religion of Allah lying about Allah when Allah did not sanction this nor did he allow it subhanahu wa ta'ala and the author is trying to say that the mubtadi' is mimman yaftari ala Allah kadhiba is lying about Allah saying that which Allah hasn't said subhanahu wa ta'ala the third evidence is liyahmilu awzarahum kamilatan yawm al-qiyama wa min awzari alladhina yudhillunahum bi ghayri ilm that the one who innovates is going to take his own sins and is going to take the sins of every single person who he is misguided. So the Mubtadi' his sin is not exclusive to him. He's going to take the sins of every single person who he has strayed from the straight path. So the author is trying to amuse it. The danger is high here because when you do a sin, it's exclusive to you. But when you do innovation, you are going to take it sin and every single person you've misguided who you've said to them this is the religion of Allah this is what Allah's deen says you're going to take it on your scale the day of judgment the fourth evident that evidence that the author used is and now sallallahu alayhi wasallam qala fil khawarij that the prophet said about the khawarij which are renegades rebels like ISIS and groups like that the messenger said ayna ma laqitum wherever i find them faqtuluhum i will kill them the messenger saying this, min hadith Ali ibn Abi Talib. They're renegades and they're rebels and they are commanded to be killed. Rather, the Prophet ﷺ, he said they're going to be killed in a way that he's never said anyone should be killed. He said, ad. I will kill them like how the people of Ad were killed. How were the people of Ad killed? Allah says in the Quran, Fahal tara lahum min meaning none of them is going to remain. If the Prophet said, I saw them, I will not let any of them live. Because they are a cancer in the community which they are in. They will not let anyone stay alive. They will kill every single person. And the first people that they are going to kill is not the non-believers. The first people they're going to start with, as the Prophet told us, is the Muslims. So uh, the Khawarij are more of a cancer and a problem to us than anyone else. Who do they cause the most, most harm to? Huh? The Muslims. The Muslims are the ones who suffer the most from them. They are the ones who... So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentions that he's going to kill them. He would not have killed them if they were just sinners. Sinners are not killed. Even the one who drinks alcohol is not killed. Are you with me brothers? So this shows that it's, the, the innovation is bigger and greater than the major sin. The sixth evidence is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prohibited the killing of the transgressive leaders, you can't kill the leaders as long as they pray. You can't kill them. <coughs> Why is the author trying to use that? He's trying to say that it's the leaders who are committing alcohol, drinking alcohol. Are you with me, brothers? They're the Jawr. The Jair is the one who's he's killing the people. He's a transgressor. He's drinking alcohol. He's a transgressor. He's committing zina. He's a transgressor. No one's allowed to fight with him. The Prophet prohibited the fighting with a leader who is oppressive and transgressive. People are not allowed to uprise against him. Are they allowed to? Nope. The Prophet said, be patient. Be patient until you meet me the day of. Hatta Until you meet me in the fountain. Be patient as the Messenger. Alayhi salatu wasalam said, so this shows you that the people who do major sins, are they fought against? No, they're not. Number seven. Hadith of Jarir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet asked for the people to give sadaqah. And what did the Prophet say? Give sadaqah. So one man stood up and he was the first one to start in giving the sadaqah. He was the what? He was the first one to start with giving the sadaqah. So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَنْ سَنَّ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ سُنَّةً حَسَنًا فَلَهُ أَجْرُهَا وَأَجْرُ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَا إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ لَا يَنْقُصْ ذَلِكَ مِنْ أُجُورِهِمْ شَيْئًا That the one who starts off a good, who revives a good, then he's going to get the reward for it. And the reward is also going to go for who? Every single body who copies him. And then the Messenger said in the hadith, وَمَنْ سَنَّ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ سُنَّةً سَيِّئًا And the one who innovates in the religion, he places in the religion a innovation 
فَلَهُ He gets the sin for it. وَوِزْرُ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَا And the sin of those who do it. لَا يَنْقُسْ ذَارِكَ مِنْ أَوْزَارِهِمْ شَيْئًا And your sins will not be decreasing for you. So the innovator is going to take the sins of those who he has misguided as well. This is the same as the ayah that we mentioned before. The eighth and the... How many evidence did I say? I said seven, right? I missed the fifth one. What was the fourth one? The khawarij. The, the fifth one. Ah, the fifth one is If I meet them, I will kill them the killing of Ad. I mentioned it, right? But I just didn't say it was the fifth dalil. The fifth one is لَإِنْ لَقِيْتُمُوهُمْ If I meet them, I will kill them the killing of Ad. Meaning the Khawarij. And the evidences are eight, by the way, not seven, sorry. The seventh one is the hadith of Abu Huraira. مَنْ دَعَى إِلَى هُدَى Anyone who calls to guidance and good, he will gain the good of that which he called to. And anyone who calls to misguidance, he, he is he's going to what? He's going to gain the sin for it and the sin of everyone who follow, follows it. And anyone who calls to good, he will get the reward of the good that he's called to and every evil and every good that is done by anybody, he will get the reward for it. Naam. Naam. That's the eighth one, Naam. هذا مروي من حديث انس رضي الله عنه ومن مراسيل ومن مراسيل الحسن وذكر وذكر ابن وضاح عن ايوب قال كان عندنا رجل يرى رايا فتركه فاتيت محمد بن سيرين فقلت اشعرت ان فلانا ترك رايه قال انظر الى ماذا يتحول ان اخر الحديث اشد عليهم من اوله يمرقون من الإسلام ثم لا يعودون لا يعودون إليه وسئل أحمد بن حمل رحمه الله تعالى عن معنى ذلك قال لا يوفق لا يوفق للتوبة The author, rahimahullah, here he's talking, is still connected to the previous chapter, kind of, which is that بيان قبح البدعة وشناعتها. He's going to clarify for you the evilness, how bad and evil innovation is, and how evil its consequences are. And that is, the person who comes with innovation, that their repentance doesn't get accepted. Their, their repentance, repentance is not accepted. Sorry, the, the, sorry, it doesn't mean, sorry, it doesn't mean that the repentance is not accepted. Sorry. It doesn't mean that the repentance is not accepted. What it means is that, they won't come with the in, in repentance in the first place. Because you come with repentance when you believe you're wrong. To repent from something and ask for forgiveness, it means you've acknowledged what you were upon was wrong. And the innovator is actually getting closer to Allah. Those who have these khawarij mindset, when you talk to them, would they accept it from you? He's getting closer to Allah with this opinion of his. They won't accept it from you. Whereas the sinner who sits committing sins, he knows what he's doing is wrong. And he will even say to you, make dua for me. That Allah takes me out of the situation that I'm in. Whereas the innovator. So that's what it means that the door of repentance is closed from him. It means he won't even come to his senses to repent. And this author brings three evidences for this. Hadith of Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu which is marfu' Inna Allah hajab at-tawbata an sahibi an sahibi kulli bid'atin. That Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He closed the door of every innovator. And Ishaq ibn Rahuya narrated in his Musnad, Tabarani in his Mu'jam al Kabir, min wajhin la yasahu from different narrations that are not authentic. And it has been narrated with different wordings Hajaba, Hajaza, Hajaza, Hajaba, Hajara, and Hajaza. Three different wordings have come. And as you can see, the speech of the author here is clear of what he's using it for. 
The second evidence that the author is bringing is a hadith of what? Al Hassan al Basri Mursalan. And Mursal, my beloved brothers and sisters, is from the hadith which are weak. Akhraja ibn Wadah fil Bidati wa Nahi anha. And it is the best which is in the particular chapter. The third evidence that the author is trying to bring is Yamrukuna min al Islami kama Yamruku Sahamu min al Ramiya. That they will leave Islam like the arrow leaves the bow. And the hadith is in Sahihain min hadith Abi Sa'id al Khudri. But it's not in Muslim. The wording is not in Muslim that says, Thumala ya'uduna ilayhi that they won't come back to it. That's only in Bukhari. The story which the author here mentions, the author's story here that he mentions here is the story of Muhammad ibn Sirin, who is a tabi'i, he met the companions. Which he was a person who left an opinion. And then he was asked about this person who left this opinion. What do you think about this person's repentance? And he said, look at how he exchanged, how he changes back. And he will come back to where he left off from. That he said in the Akhir al-Hadith, the ending of the Hadith is greater than the beginning for them. These people, the, the desires will sway them and twist them and turn them. That they won't be consistent upon a path. They won't be. That's why Ahmad ibn Hanbal, when he explained it, he says, لا يوفق للتوبة A repentance won't be made easy for these people. It's hard for them. Some of the ulama, they said, when innovation enters a person, it does not ever fully leave them. It always leaves marks in the person. Damn. باب قول الله تعالى يا أهل الكتاب لما تحاجون في إبراهيم إلى قوله وما كان من المشركين وقوله تعالى ومن يرغب عن ملة إبراهيم إلا من سفه نفسه وفيه حديث وفيه حديث الخوارج وقد تقدم في الصحيح أنه صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن آل أبي فلان ليسوا لي بأولياء إنما أولياء المتقون وفيه أيضا عن أنس رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذكر له أن ذكر له أن بعض الصحابة قال أما أنا فلا أكل اللحم وقال الآخر أما أنا فأقوم ولا أنام وقال الآخر أما أنا أما أنا فلا أتزوج النساء وقال الآخر أما أنا فأصوم الدهر فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لكني أنام وأقوم وأصوم وأفطر وأتزوج النساء وأكل اللحم فمن رغب عن سنتي فليس مني فتأمل إذا كان بعض أفاضل الصحابة لما لما أرادوا التبتل للعبادة قال فيه هذا الكلام الغريب وسمى فعله رغوبا عن عن السنة فما ظنك بغير هذا من البدع وما ظنك بغير السحاب بغير الصحابة the author, the reason why he brought this chapter here is that the ending of an innovator, it will lead to other than Islam. Innovation, as it said, al-bid'ah, is shara kul ishraq. Bid'ah, ikhwani, is qantara to shirki. It's the bridge to shirk. But then you can look at the people who fall into innovation, Innovation is the stepping stone to, to shirk. <coughs> they start off with innovation until shaitan takes them to the until shaitan takes them to the pit of shirk. He beautifies it for them, beautifies for them until what? Until you look at those. وَإِنَّ مِنْ جُودِكَ الدُّنْيَا وَضَرَّتَهَا وَمِنْ عُلُومِكَ عِلْمَ اللَّوْحِ وَالْقَلَمِ Busiri in his Burda, these people are reading it on the Mawlid in Nabawi, the Prophet's birthday. That's what it was. The Burda is the book they read on the Mawlid, the Prophet's birthday. وَإِنَّ مِنْ جُودِكَ الدُّنْيَا وَضَرَّتَهَا is part of it. That this world that you see, Muhammad, it's part of your... It's part of your giving. وَمِنْ عُلُومِكَ عِلْمَ اللَّوْحِ وَالْقَلَمِ And your knowledge is the knowledge of what's on the Lawh al 
All of this is what? The love of the messenger, celebrating his birthday. But what creeped in? Shirk. So that's what happens. Innovation is where it all starts from. Shirk started through innovation. وَقَالُوا لَا تَذَرُنَّ آلِهَتَكُمْ وَلَا تَذَرُنَّ وَلَا تَذَرُنَّ وَلَا تَذَرُنَّ وَدًّا وَلَا سُوَاعًا وَلَا يَغُوتَ وَيَعُوقَ وَنَسْرًا That's where it started from. Five righteous men, they loved those five righteous men, and they went overboard with these five righteous men. And when they went overboard with these five righteous men, what happened? They worshipped them. They worshipped them besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why the person should close off all doors and not allow it to enter into them. Is this in the Quran or is it in the Sunnah? No. Well, I don't need to, I don't, I don't really want to know then. If shaitan succeeds in creeping innovation into you, then what? Then shirk is the stepping stone next after it. Because what? The mukhalafat, opposition of Allah are three types. The first one is a shirk, it's the highest. The second one is bid'ah, which is the lower than shirk. And the third one is al-kaba'ir, major sins. So he makes you do the minor sins. He succeeds in the minor sins, you take the minor sins very lightly, okay, no problem. He pushes you into kaba'ir. When he pushes you into kaba'ir, he keeps pushing you forward and keeps pushing you forward until he pushes you into what? Into bid'ah. When he succeeds in pushing you into bid'ah, then you're now a step away from shirk. And so finally the person will fall into shirk. The author brought five, so this is why he brought this chapter now. That innovation is what leads to what? A shirk. The author then brings five evidences for it. The first evidence is the statement of Allah, O oh, the people of the scripture, Christians and Jews, why are you arguing in the affairs of Ibrahim? The reason why is because Ibrahim is not Yahudi, Nasrani. he's not a Christian nor is he a Jew. And Ibrahim is not from the pagans. But Ibrahim was what? Huh? Ibrahim was Hanif and Muslim wa lam yakum min al-mushrikeen. He's Hanif, a ma'ilun min al-shirk wa ahli. Ibrahim is far from in shirk. He's got nothing to do with shirk. Ibrahim is one who surrendered himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is the author using this verse? I mean, what's he trying to get from this verse for the chapter that he placed? He means by this, when the Jews and the Christians, they divided and they differed amongst themselves. They showed love to other than the religion of Ibrahim. And this is the likes of the innovators today. They divided and they differed amongst themselves and showing passion to other than the religion. When you say Qala Allah and Qala Rasul, that's the thing that they hate the most. The third, second evidence is وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَنْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِحَ نَفْسَهِ And the, what the author is trying to use from this ayah is إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِحَ نَفْسَهِ Safih is the one, Safih is the one who is dim-witted, dumb. The one who shows passion. To other than the religion of Ibrahim, he is dim-witted. The third evidence is the hadith of the Khawarij, which the author already mentioned, يَمْرُقُونَ مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ كَمَا يَمْرُقُ السَّهْمُ مِنَ الْرَمِيَّةِ He said, He's referring to the hadith of Abi Sa'id al Khudri, which is in Sahihain. The word Yamrukun, Muruku Sahmi means Khuruju when he leaves it. Al Ramiyah is the arrow.
Scholars differ amongst themselves. What does it mean, Yamruquna min al Islam? Does it mean that the Khawarij are disbelievers or does it mean that they are sinners? Are they Kufar disbelievers? Or are they not? The ijma of the Sahabas is Adam al Kufrihim. They're not Kufar. As Ibn Taymiyyah al Hafid mentions. But they are what? They're innovators. And they are fought even that though they are Muslims, they're still fought. But the fighting is not done by the general mass. No one puts it into their own hands. It's a leader, authority. They're the ones who do it. Not everybody who sees them is allowed to kill them. No one is allowed to take it into their own hands. Whose job is it? The leaders and the ones in authority. Because the Prophet ﷺ was in authority. The fourth evidence is <coughs> And now Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam قال that the Prophet said إِنَّ آلَ أَبِي فُلَانٍ لَيْسُوا لِي بِأَوْلِيَاءٍ وَبِهَذَا اللَّفْضِ لَا يُوجَدْ This wording that the author brought is not found. But rather, this wording that he's using is actually from two separate hadiths. The first hadith is the hadith of Amr ibn al-As, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّ آلَ أَبِي فُلَانٍ لَيْسُ لِي بِأَوْلِيَاءٍ إِنَّمَا وَلِيَّ اللَّهِ وَصَالِحُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ That, إِنَّ آلَ أَبِي that the family of Abi, my dad, Abi Fulan, in the father of Abi Fulan, they're not my awliya, they're not my allies. Allah is my ally. And the righteous believers. And the Prophet here didn't mention the person's name. And that's sometimes the wisdom of when you're speaking about a person and you are mentioning their faults that you don't mention their names. You just keep it private. The second hadith that he's taken it from which is the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal which Ahmed narrated in his Muslim where Isnad hu Hasan 